Well, after last week's episode of getting two crates and a bucket off the top of that shelf there behind me, this week's episode, episode 83, let's see if we can actually get that rack out of this shed. Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. We have one box up the top there to go. I think it's some old parts from my van and I don't think I need to keep them, so that should be pretty quick. I'll, we better check in case the box was reused for something. But we'll get that top box down, then we'll look at moving this rack. There's a, two of them, there's one on top of the other, but we'll get, look at getting the top one out of this shed. And once that one's gone, we only have a little bit of stuff to get rid of from underneath, although we need to move that blue bucket because we were threatening an avalanche a couple of episodes ago. So we're going to get this top rack out shortly. We'll take that cardboard box that's marked Mercedes-Benz, and it looks like there's a Hanamex, possibly a slide projector, um, maybe not, it's the wrong shape. Uh, something to do with film or slides or something. Oh, it might be an editor. All right, we'll get that in the bench and work out what we're going to do with that as well. Okay, not terribly heavy. I have a feeling the uh, van parts might be old headlights and they might be, I think they came with it when I bought it and they're secondhand ones. I don't, they might have even been ones that the guy changed. So we'll have a look at that. And the movie editor is for, I guess, splicing the old uh, tape, the old uh, film tape. So we'll check that out. It should have some value. And uh, yeah, we'll get these two things out of the road and then go and move that rack. Okay, we'll get to that editor shortly. Let's see what's exactly in this box. It's quite light, so I'm thinking it's headlights or something. Oh, one headlight. Okay. I thought I had two. I don't know where the other one is. Probably in another box. So they're not damaged, but they're a little yellowed and the... the um, well, it's plastic, is a bit scuffed, so I know you can polish those up, but it might have some value, I guess. It looks like a clip's broken. I'll have to check online. I don't really want just want to throw it out. I mean, it really is 95% plastic. It has got globes in it, so it's before the LEDs. My van's about a 2004 model, so... Um, <clears throat> oh, it's broken up the top here too, so it might have been in a... I need a bit of a bingle and it's smashed all the mounting holes. So I guess it probably is just rubbish. That's unfortunate. And the box is really just a whole heap of cardboard. So that can all go in the recycle bin. And that makes a lot of space very easily. So I will check this out online, but I'd be very surprised if it's worth anything at all. It's probably just rubbish. Okay, the movie editor... Hopefully, oh, what is here? I thought, well, maybe there was something else in the box. So it looks undamaged. It's a bit dirty. Now, I gather this was so that you could see what was on your film and you could cut it and splice it together. Um, E300 dual editor. So it must have a little motor drive unit. It's obviously got a light behind the screen. Don't know why there's a light globe there. Oh, perhaps that shines down. That might have to have a cover over it. And the light would shine through the film somehow. Not sure. I've never used one of these. Ah, that is the cover for going over there. So that looks like a speaker grill. Does it have a speaker in it? I wouldn't have thought so. Anyway, uh, the box itself isn't very good. The old foam packing in here as well. I think I'll put it in the shop. I'm not sure what it's going to be worth. It could be. I know people do ask me for old Super 8 film stuff. So there must be people that still play with it. Uh, I might just clean it up, put it on my tester, make sure it's safe, make sure the lights work and maybe the motor works. And we might get $30 or $40 for it. Yeah, I don't think I'll keep the... Well, I suppose I should have the box with it just in case people need to know something about it that's written on the box. Anyway, I'll do a clean up. I'll do a check on, on uh, eBay perhaps and see if there's any on there. I'm guessing around $30 or $40. Okay, we'll get back to the prices on those things shortly and I will do a notepad list at the end as we normally do. So I'll probably drag a couple more things out from underneath. Um, there's a red lid for a bucket. I think we've got a bucket somewhere that that will suit. 
let's drag this out. I think I can just slide it out now. It's sitting on blocks because it's actually the feet are wider than the lower one. And it was just put here really just as a method of stacking more stuff so that we could get to the roof. The whole plan back then because we had to empty my old shop storages in a hurry and it all had to come here. We had this shed built very quickly. That's why it's the emergency storage shed and everything just got packed in here as much as we could get in here. All right, I think, well, this board can come off. That just sits loose, so that can go out first. And I don't think it's terribly heavy. It's just a pipe frame. So it's sitting on a cross piece of wood up there. I think we can probably slide it on those three bars rather than trying to lift it completely. We'll see how we go. You might get your avalanche, Shane. Okay, well let's slide. Oh, I think we can, I think we can take that timber right out. Because the pipe should slide on the pipe a lot better. Beautiful. I don't think I need to keep these. So I guess I'll just maybe sell them on sell them on a local Facebook group or something. Um, they certainly don't need to be out of the weather. I'll put them outside for the moment and I'll work out what I'm going to do. We'll empty off the stuff underneath. In fact, we can probably lift this bottom one out as well and get them both out of here today. I reckon that's a good plan. Oh, it's a bit of a squeeze to get out. They are pretty heavy too, actually. There's an air compressor in the road. Oh no, we're good. Hooray, we're out. Okay, this one's just got a single bar at the bottom, so I think we can probably lift it up. Whoop, nearly an avalanche. We're going to put that. We have to deal with this yet. Don't fall on me. There we go. We're going to get them both out. Okay, like most stuff I own, I don't actually remember where these come from. It would have been out of someone's shed. And I think I had these in my shipping container just as storage racks. I'm not sure why they were made. Uh, they're both different, as I said. One's got three pipes in the bottom, one's just got one. They're, um, they're possibly even slightly different heights, and these are be uh, mitered on the corners. These ones aren't, so they may have even come from two different places. I'm going to take them to the shop. I don't think I have a use for them here, and I'm just going to chain them up to one of the poles at the front of the shop. It would be easy to chain up so no one can pinch them, and I'll probably just put $50 the pair or maybe 30 bucks each or something like that. So that'll be some, some income back from this storage shed. Uh, we'll add it to the list and uh, it gets them out of my place here and someone else I'm sure will have a use for them. Now we have enough room to dance in here. We can almost do a waltz. We can access this shelf where there's a lot of interesting stuff. Some early computer monitors, some radios, a milk separator, uh, oh, there's another radio there. I hadn't seen that one. Doesn't look very flash. A really old um, slicer, kitchen slicer. Oh, a motorbike, Honda motorbike parts. Uh, a nice old timber pulley, flat belt pulley. And I don't know what's in these boxes. It's a nice trunk too. Uh, I think we did reach in and grab these gauges at one stage just to have a look. There's an ammeter there. So not sure if I'll sell them or... or have a use for them. I'll work that out. There's an early Sanyo top mount video player, pretty rough condition. No idea if it's worth anything or not. I probably just kept it because it was vintage. Mystery box, old tools, looks like a early uh, block and tackle with big pulley hooks there. And we won't get into that shelf yet. I want to clean up this floor space here. 
we might just deal with these fuel cans and that GMC uh, sander. Uh, perhaps in this video, we can't get that box out until we move that. And then we have to move that to get that. And you know the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone and we have to move all of these things. Probably starting with those picture frames. And then we'll get into the, geez, I don't know what's in that. It wouldn't be very heavy, I wouldn't think, being up there. That one looks like it might even be just bubble wrap, just packing. So we'll get through some of this pretty quickly. Some old lawnmower wheels, don't know and don't know what's under there. Looks like there's a console radio, an early TV. Oh, we're getting into the depths in here. And we're only about halfway. Don't know what's in any of these boxes. Clearly there's a fair bit of weight in them because they're starting to compact at the bottom. Uh, another TV down the bottom, some tools in there. All right, that's enough poking around. Let's um, just work out what we're gonna do with these fuel cans and perhaps this sander. And that should be a wrap for this video. Okay, these cans, though, I think they were like um, outboard motor fuel cans. That one's obviously been used for whipper snipper, and whoever owned it didn't know how to spell whipper. At least I used to put a H in it. Um, four horsepower boat. Okay, so he did use it for his boat. Um, that one's still got petrol in it. It's about half full. So I'm going to drain that out. It'll be definitely stale. I'll put that into my jerry can here where I keep it just for washing up parts. And the other one's basically empty. It's quite oily inside. There's no sign of any leaks on either of them. I think they're fairly clean inside as far as rust goes. I'm just going to, I'm not going to go to too much trouble. I'll just brush them down so that they're not filthy dirty. Put them in the shop at $10 each. They should sell quick at that. I don't want them hanging around too long. And the GMC um, sander, it's a belt sander and a disc. It, it looks a pretty good piece of kit. Uh, these GMCs, I think, were the first of the, the mass of Chinese tools that came into Australia in the 1990s, I think, from memory. I don't think they're still going. I don't think they lasted much longer than about 10 years. Um, but it seems to be reasonably, I mean, it's a cast iron base. It's quite heavy. And really, what can, other than a motor play up or something, the quality of your sanding is really going to more depend on your sandpaper than anything. So it's probably still quite a functional piece. It's quite compact. Um, I did quickly search eBay, didn't see any on there. You can still buy belts for them. And uh, I think to resell it, I might get $75, something like that, assuming it works okay. But given that it's so compact, and it would be quite handy. I might keep it here for now. I do have a better sanding setup, but that's on a, a much bigger uh, pedestal um, bench grinder type setup. And I haven't got room for that yet. This one still could be used on the bench right now if I had to do a bit of sanding on a timber project or something. I may hang on to it just for now, but I will sell it down the track. And I'm thinking probably about $75. But given that I'm going to hang on to it for now, we won't add that to the list so I'll just sell the fuel cans. I'll work out a price for the editing thingo and I'll check the headlight. And I do think there's another one in my shed here. If I can find it, that will be a bonus to get that out of this shed. And then we'll get the notepad out. And now it's time to summarize our uh, evaluations of this stuff. I've had a good look at these lights. I've looked at the ones on my van and they're quite good. Given that I still own the van, I should hang on to them because that centerpiece where the globes are, and it's still got globes in it, by the way, but the centerpiece actually is a separate piece. It comes out, it's held in with wire clips there. So there's nothing wrong with that. The reflectors all look nice and clean in there. So I'm never going to replace the entire assembly back onto the van. If I have troubles with the ones on there, I'll buy new ones. But if for some reason I need another globe or the reflectors get tarnished or something on the other one, I still could swap some parts over. So I'll hang on to those for now, but I don't think they're any value to anyone else. Uh, the fuel cans I've washed out and I've left the caps off overnight just to dry out. I checked out the uh, editor here and I've plugged in. It doesn't have a motor in it. It's got hand crank things here. So you wind the film through manually. It powers up fine. I don't have any film to actually test it, but the focusing seems to do things and the frame section appears to work. There's no speaker in there, of course. I don't know why they have a grill there because... It doesn't have an amplifier or anything. It can't possibly pick up sound from the film. 
but really it's just a uh, a way of identifying individual frames on your film there'd be some way of of cutting them and then you'd splice them together perhaps with a different piece of equipment i'm not sure i've never done it but this one appears to be in good working order i found some online one in australia sold for 95 dollars a couple overseas sold for about 30 or 40 plus postage uh someone was asking 80 and it hadn't sold i don't think they've got a big demand but i'm going to put say 40 dollars on it in the shop i think we'll find someone sooner or later that buys it and i can put a safety tag on it now because i've tested it brings us to the notepad not many items this time you'll notice that the price of the frames is now 70 i actually threw them on facebook on the local buy swap and sell groups and someone's coming to pick them up friday morning i made them 80 dollars uh, sorry 40 each or 70 the pair so they're actually sold they'll be picked up friday uh, a local guy i'm pretty sure he won't let me down gives us a total of 130 dollars um so how's that not bad got a bit of stuff out of the shed i'll have to stash those lights somewhere they're pretty bulky but um, i'm sure i could hide them in the back of a cupboard somewhere and the rest of the stuff will go to the shop first thing friday morning i'm really pleased to get those frames out of the shed it's opened it up so much now and we'll have a bit more room to work and i'm so pleased they sold quickly got them out of my road and now i'm starting to think oh they might have been handy got to stop that they have to go if i really need a pipe frame table down the track i'll just make one uh so good processed a bit of stuff our total now is pretty much spot on thirteen thousand dollars worth of stuff out of that shed so really happy with that too it all helps the bottom line thanks for watching hope you tune in for the next episode bye for now